Welcome to another episode. So, my brush hogged today, the top place. I, I reached brush hogged everything up here, the trails and everything. Uh, brush hogged the lower area where my brother mostly hunts back in there. Might actually be a good year for ducks. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of water in the swamp this year. Um, so as long as that'll stay in there for the next couple of months, it'll be good. Um, with it being in there throughout the summer, the snails will be in there. And last time it was like this, we had thousands of green heads in there. I mean, we would go in in one shot. Even though you're aiming at one duck, you would end up killing your limit. So I'm kind of excited. I haven't got to duck hunt in a couple years because where I normally duck hunt, send some guys over there and they're baiting which you're not supposed to do that's illegal but they're baiting with corn they're shooting 30 40 ducks every day that they hunt and there's usually just two or three of them i've called the game wardens multiple times um they say they're going to come out they never show up uh, i even talked to one of them one day and he said he was on the other side of the county, and his exact words was, I guess that person picked the perfect day to poach. What the hell kind of answer from a game warden is that? But whatever. Um, maybe this is getting seen. Maybe they'll get a fire lit under them so they actually respond. Um, but the good thing is when I did brush hog these spots, I saw a lot more growth than I expected. So... I set the brush hog height where it's not going to interfere with what was already growing. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to plant again, just like we talked about. This will be my stage two planting. Um, on the ends, I'll do so right over here on the end. Let me flip you around. Hold on, I'm talking about. So for this place right over here on this end, I will plant uh, winter peas. Um, and you can see we're at the tower blind. Uh, let me flip you back around. Okay, so I'll, I'll plant winter peas down at that end. Um, I'll put more brassicas in front of me. I've got a lot of clover growing here still. I've got a lot of brassicas growing here. Let me flip you around real quick again. I don't know if you can see that, but that's all turnips and radishes. and So it's doing good, actually. And this one had each spot. It was like that. Um... I had a picture of a doe the other day. She came up to this. I don't have my camera set on video because I want pictures to come to me. But she came up to it. It looked like she smelt it and went on. So I'm hoping we can start getting some kind of action like that. Um, the bucks are not coming in yet. But as soon as they do, they're going to hit that. Um, let me come over to my camera real quick. What I don't understand on these. And I've got these tack cams. What I don't understand is I delete the photos off the app. And I was under the impression those deleted off the card, which I think they do. Um, so what I'm going to do, because it's telling me it's 97% full, I'm just turning it off, turn it back on out. Yep, I'm going to have to replace the batteries. And I'm going to have to put a new chip in this. Yeah, it's telling me low battery. Okay. So... And I'll probably do the same thing for the other one when I do that this week. Um, but I'll get some batteries and replace all that. Oh, um, big old spider right there, big garden spider. It's a good thing. Let him eat, eat anything he wants to around my stand. That's great. As long as he's not in my stand. I'm not, I don't have no spider phobia or anything like my sister-in-law does, but for hell, even my wife, I think. Stand looks good. It's ready to go. My wife's actually starting to get excited. She's like, ooh, do you think we can film my hunt? and Maybe get my second deer on camera. She's killed one. I was really proud of her. It's about a 15, 20 yard shot. Um, she shot him a little high though. She broke his back, but I mean, he dropped instantly, killed him instantly. She was super excited, but now she wants to get one that's, as we call not a wonky buck 
one horn's nice, the other one's salt crazy like. Um, so when we brush hog today, I brush hogged up here at the top where we've been working. And then I brush hog down the lower areas where my brother likes to hunt around the swamp. That's how we saw the swamp was full. And um, thinking the swamp's going to be doing good. No persimmons this year. Mm. It's a bummer. Um, but I had a brush hog two places that were fairly good size for food plots. The third place I wanted a brush hog that we weren't going to hunt. Um, it had grown up with trees. Uh, about this size right here. About like this. Like overnight almost. I mean, I don't remember them being in there last year. So I didn't want to run the brush hog through a whole bunch of trees like that. Because it's just a little tractor. Um, so we... Uh, Decided not we're, we're not going to plant that food plot this year. Uh, maybe next year we'll clean it out and use it again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what those other two do this year. We didn't plant them last year. Still had quite a few deer in the area. I mean, my brother killed a really nice, nice one, 23 points last year. So uh, maybe, maybe this year we'll see what the food plots do. If it helps, if it doesn't help, if we need more food, whatever. Uh, so. I'm gonna jump in the truck. We're gonna to go to the other spot real quick and I'll be back. All right, at the other spot. So I'll show you what I did here and I've got quite a bit of good growth in here right now. You know, we've talked about this spot before. It's got the, quite a bit of clover in here. Now I've got a lot of the brassicas starting to come up. I'll plant some more, plant some peas in here. This will be a good spot. This place is always good. But, but let me show you what I've done here. Flip your around. See that strip right there I left and did not brush hog? It goes all the way down, down by that tree. So what that is, I'm going to plant switchgrass in that strip. Just the way it is. It's already a grass growing. That switchgrass will just choke it out. But I'm going to plant switchgrass all the way from, flip it back. All the way from right here, where this tree's at, that is going to be switchgrass all the way down to that corner. And that gives me a nice trail to walk in, go back in there to my stand. Does not won't spook anything that's in this field. We'll see how that works. I, I'm kind of interested to see because I've never used switchgrass before. I usually use like Johnson grass or something. But I think switchgrass is going to have a little bit more rigidity to it. Um, yeah, I got a lot of good growth in here. But I think that switchgrass will have a lot of good rigidity to it. And it will um, really hold up and do what I want. Plus, with this particular plot, I see quail here quite a bit anyways. So that switchgrass is going to add just that much more for them. Um, That'll be good. Looks like it's going to rain. Be nice. It's kind of cooled off a little bit since even the last spot, and that wasn't but just a few minutes ago. Um, I think there's like a 10 or 15% chance. Not much, but it'd be nice. We used to actually hunt right on this plot. And we didn't really plant it back then when we hunted on it. Let me walk over here and show you kind of what we're dealing with in this area. All right. I'm going to flip you around again. So right back up in there, if I don't know if you can see it, but right, right here, this tree, that's an oak tree. I used to keep a stand in that. We then moved the stand to this oak tree right here. Never killed anything here, but what's nice about this spot is right back up behind that, that oak tree, about 50 yards back up in there is the bedding area and then you go another 50 60 yards and you're to the box blind or, or the tower blind my sorry but the tower blind that spot we were just at so the deer bed right in there does will bed kind of on the outskirts so you know right over there's the truck on the outskirts right over there 
you'll see them bed down when you, we drive down sometimes. Um, even when I walk down, I can see the does laying there, and they'll lay there, and they won't even jump up. Um, they act like, you know, I act like I don't notice them there, and they just lay there. But they'll lay right in there. Usually, the big mature buck that we have on the property is hid right back up in there every year. Now, right over here, right over here is a ridge line that runs all the way down the whole property. Now it's only about a 10 to 15 foot drop depending on which, which part of the ridge you're on down to the bottoms. Right here at this corner, there's this little creek that comes through and snakes back up and it goes into the swamp. The deer will cross the road right here. They come in through this swamp or this, this, they'll come across this creek. Sometimes they will come up here and then go back into there. Uh, sometimes they will just cross it and they'll run right down the ridge line. Um, and then other times they'll cross it and they'll go back and right in the very center of the property um, is some really thick brush that they bed in there as well. And then I've been finding, okay, let's turn around, directly behind me, so right back here, about 100, 150 yards, I have found is another spot that the bucks like to lay. It's right on the edge of the draw or on that, that ridge where they can look down and see what's coming. It's in a spot where actually when you look down that ridge, look straight down, it's really open. They can see it when it's open, okay? And all of the three sides is really thick brush. And I have noticed that they bed there when we have an east or a north wind, sometimes a south wind. But if we have a west wind, they will not bed right there. They will bed up in this stuff. So, Think about, you know, maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll get a map, a Google map, and talk you guys through it. But you've got this bedding area for bucks. You've got a bedding area right up here that the bucks stay in. You've got the swamp is actually pretty thick, and that great big one my dad killed was bedding right up in it. So you've got three buck bedding areas within 150 yards of where this spot is. This is one spot why, that's one reason I love this spot. Because I've got my stand right on the edge of the, the ridge in here. So I do have to walk through the woods. I've got around where I don't have to go through any deer trails or anything. And it really works out well. I mean, we see the bucks there in the morning. We see them there in the evening. It, 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 it works out really well as long as... Um, as long as I haven't spooked them out, you know, by shooting one or something. And even then I've shot one and then been back the very next day and seen another one there. So it, that doesn't spook them too bad. But that's one reason I'm really trying to work on this spot. And then the, the tower blind as well, because these two bedding areas over to my side here, to the north of me, both of them will draw the bucks. They'll come into this one or they'll go into that one, either or works really well this one will draw the bucks from the swamp they'll come up into this one um, and then typically what they'll do is they'll feed here they'll go across the road and their soybean field about uh, half a mile away and that's where they'll stay all night during season until the soybeans get harvested and then they change their pattern a little bit um, but this always works out for a really good evening. Now, as far as not shooting any on it, I think it was because we were right on the, the, the plot. We weren't planting it back then. We just had it right there, and we was hoping to catch them between the travel. And didn't really work out as well as we'd like to. But ever since we've been hunting back off the ridge and been planting this plot, it has worked wonders for us. We see deer here all the time. I mean, my first, what I call wall hanger, eight point that I shot in high school right here I uh, had a stand back here on this corner and then realized that wasn't the best place for a stand and moved it over to the other place where I'm I hunt now but shot a really nice eight point there we've seen tons of deer here big bucks here that on the property so I really like this spot I try not to hunt this spot early in the season because I, I don't want to spook them from this um, 
starting around Halloween, muzzleloader season is when I just like to start hunting this spot. Um, but, I mean, if I've got a buck coming in here and I can pattern him and I know he's going to be here during early season, I'll, I'll come in. I, I have no problem doing that. But usually I like hunting the thick stuff down where my brother likes to hunt or the tower blind uh, in early season. So it is extremely hot. I'm going to shut this off, get in the truck. Might talk to you on the way out while I'm driving out. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So let's talk about the property for a second. So here's kind of a map of uh, our property. This is 80 acres. So this blue line you see running down almost the middle of the property. That's that ridge that I'm talking about. So that that's kind of where the ridge runs in, in the property. So those green areas you see, those are the food plots that we've been working on. And you see this property is mostly brush. And then each one of those little red dots, those are different stands that we already have up. Those are locations we hunt all the time and we're very successful from. So you see at the very top right hand corner it says box. That's the box blind that my dad likes to hunt out of. So you've got that green strip right in front of it. That's the uh, the food plot that I always plant directly in front of that box blind. And then you've got that little circle off to the south of it. Um, that's the other food plot I, I plant next to it and shooting down that lane. Um, you head straight south, you see that's the bigger food plot. That's going to be where the tower's at that I really like hunting at. And then you go southwest from there, and you'll see the ridge and the food plot that we were t just looking at a moment ago. And then you'll see the stand there in the woods a little bit from that ridge, or, or from the, the, the food plot right on that ridge. <clears throat> if you go on over to uh, the west, you'll see um, you'll see a, a kind of a food plot um, to the uh, southeast of, of a pond, um, and then due north of that is the stand that my brother likes to hunt. Uh, northeast of that, we've got another food plot. And then there's a stand right on there. That's actually a new location. We just recently started hunting the last couple of years. Um, and it shows a lot of promise. We've seen a lot of deer out of that stand. And then all these yellow places, those are different places that the deer will typically bed all the time. Um, the littler ones, those are ones that we know where bucks stay. Um, and I didn't take time to plot all the doe ones because honestly the does bed all over the property anyways. Um, the does will bed all over by the tower blind, all around that food plot. They bed all along the um, the road. So if you look real close, you can see, um, like so right there by the ridge, you see that real light brown area that's coming out of it. That's the uh, uh, oil field road. It kind of wraps, goes around and comes back up. Um, but anyways, that, that's kind of... Uh, the does bed just all over the place, but we kind of pointed out a couple places where we know some bigger does bed. And then you can see kind of the swamps and stuff. It's mostly flat ground except for the top part, um, which is from the ridge to the east. That is a little bit uh, higher in elevation, just, just by 15 or 20 feet. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what we work with. Um, and then just, just for reference, the bottom, the very bottom of the picture, that's due south and that's where the road's at. Um, as far as the, the actual dirt county road. Um, so yeah, hopefully this gets you an idea of wh how we kind of have our property set up. That way, you know, maybe it'll help you plan yours if you've got a similar setup. If not, you know, be glad to help you out. Just let me know. All right. In the truck, we're heading out. I want to show you what I'm talking about up here, this bedding area. We've seen several deer in there and see them just driving through like this before. Usually about mid-September we'll start seeing them laying back up in there. I mean we've hunt, even hunt this trail before because they these oil field, well, these used to be oil field roads that we're riding on now but the deer love traveling them. My son's back there looking at me like dad what are you doing? You're talking to yourself. <laughs> All right, get right up here and I'll stop and show you. All right. 
right there that's where those does like to lay down i mean it looks open to you but those does I, I i don't know right before that tall grass so you see that tall grass right back up there kind of right starting right up back up in here that's about where they'll lay and one year we had a doe laying there and she was a big doe she was probably you remember that big doe what do you think she probably weighed 200 pounds she was as big as sweetie wasn't she yeah, she was. She probably weighed about 200 pounds. She was just monstrous doe, and we debated on shooting her, and then decided to leave her alone. And it's actually a good thing we did because we ended up seeing quite a few deer laying up in here and realizing that that's a good bedding area, and we can walk by it, drive by it, and it doesn't bother them because it's so close to the road. I mean, just on the other side behind me is the actual dirt road, so they're used to vehicles coming up and down there. Um, yeah, I thought I'd show you since we were talking about that.